Hey everyone, Chandler here, and I kind of just wanted to talk to you all about like my gender dysphoria, body dysphoria, kind of like what I've been going through. I didn't realize how bad my gender dysphoria was. I've noticed that I've been taking it really, really, really hard. I feel like my gender dysphoria has always been this bad. I just didn't notice it before. I am a non-binary person. I use they, them pronouns. I know that for me personally, it would make me feel a lot better about myself. I think the reason that I've been so against the idea of taking testosterone is because I'm scared of how other people will react. I have finally seen just how devastating my gender dysphoria is to my mental health and how greatly it affects me to the point where I want to make a change. I want to do something that will alleviate that. Hey everyone, Chandler here, and this is actually a very special day. This is my one month on testosterone. Hey everyone, Chandler here, and this is about my two months on tea, which if you didn't know, was today. Hey everyone, Chandler here, and today is my three months on tea. Hey everyone, Chandler here. 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 Hey everyone, Chandler here, and I am officially one year on testosterone. At first, I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to make this video. Um, it seemed pretty daunting to me because I knew I wanted it to be special. I wanted to make this like beautiful and emotional commemorative video about my experiences and what led me to this point. But I just wasn't sure where to start. So I guess I'll just start at the beginning. I was born in Charlotte, North Carolina on August 7th, 1998. My parents named me their baby girl, Elena Nicole Wilson. Growing up, I always felt pretty disconnected from gender. I was quite the girly girl in some aspects and yet a huge tomboy in others. I had long blonde curly hair and my favorite article of clothing was a skort. My mom was a pretty cool woman who never forced any gender roles onto me. She was a tomboy growing up and wanted me to be able to express myself. She bought me the clothes I wanted to wear and taught me the things I wanted to learn without judgment. When I was about seven years old, I learned what puberty was. It fascinated me, but I didn't quite understand how it worked. I wanted to pick and choose which characteristics I would receive as if I was grocery shopping. I wanted broad shoulders and curvy hips and sideburns. Okay, maybe I didn't have great taste as a kid, but that's beside the point. I was 12 when I learned that wasn't how puberty worked. I was mildly disappointed, but it didn't seem to bother me that much at the time. What really bothered me was seeing my name written out on forms or on schoolwork. Looking at it always felt weird. It never felt like it was mine. But I just figured everyone felt weird about their name, because my best friend growing up always went by her middle name. I used to cry when I got my hair cut. I didn't understand why, though. I never disliked the length, or the style, or anything like that. Looking back on it now, I feel as if my hair was the most important way for me to express myself and affect people's perception of me. At age 14, I decided spontaneously one night during summer vacation to chop off all of my hair. Here is the exact photo I took immediately after. The next day, I told my sister that I wished my chest was flat sometimes and she asked me if I was a trans guy. Caught off guard, I said no. <laughs> then I spent a year of my life secretly wondering if I was a guy. I went back and forth between identifying as bi-gender girl and boy, and as a trans guy. I had my online friends call me Mason. I liked when strangers thought I was a boy, but I didn't feel like a boy. I couldn't figure out why strangers calling me sir gave me such butterflies. When I was 15, I was so scared about trying to piece together my identity and coming out that I just bottled it all back up. I was worried that I was faking it or that it was just some teenage angst I'd grow out of. That's when I met Xander, who had just come out as a trans man. I'd live an entire year being confused and frustrated with myself and my body before I was finally exposed to the term agender. 
I privately embraced it. Xander was the first person I told to start calling me Chandler. When I was 16, feeling lost and alone, I started looking online for community. I tried to find agender YouTubers, but my search only turned up two results. One person, in the end, came out as a trans guy. The other person believed they did have a gender, but that they just didn't know the word for it yet. Neither of these stories could I relate to. I decided that if there was a hole in a gender representation, I was going to try and fill it. On March 15th, 2015, I uploaded my What is a Gender video. I identify as a gender. I use they, them pronouns. That I have no gender. I am genderless. Hundreds of thousands of people saw the video and were supportive. They told me they felt the same way I did, and then asked me how I came out to my parents. And I, uh, I hadn't, uh, I hadn't done that yet. <laughs> so, I came out to my mom as agender and shared it with the world on April 5th, 2015. I go by Chandler as some of my classes. Yeah. Why is that? I identify as agender, meaning that I don't have a gender, unlike being Boy or girl. Up until this moment, I had gone back and forth in my head about starting testosterone. Every few months, I would go through phases of desperately wanting to physically transition. I never pursued it though since I was so unsure. I moved out of my parents' house and left for college when I was 17 years old. I was in a co-ed dorm on the girls' side and felt extremely isolated. After only a semester, I decided to leave college and move into my very first apartment with Xander on December 15th, 2016. In February of 2017, I got my first retail job. Before this, strangers would hear my high-pitched voice and read me as either like a 16-year-old girl or like a 14-year-old boy. Our brains automatically try to categorize things we encounter in order to make sense of our surroundings, so I guess it made sense then that all of the customers were automatically detecting that since I had a job, I had to be at least 16 years old, and if my voice was still that high-pitched at 16, then that meant I had to be a girl. Everyone was calling me a girl. Ma'am. Woman. Lady. She. It was at this moment I realized just how intense my gender dysphoria was. I was having multiple mental breakdowns a day from the distress of being read in an unbalanced and definitive way. I knew now that I needed to start taking testosterone. After a few more weeks of even more consideration, I scheduled an appointment to start my medical transition. I had my first testosterone injection on March 23rd, 2017. I was ecstatic, and I felt that I was finally on the right track and pursuing the right path for me after years of uncertainty. As the weeks passed, my mood began to improve. I finally felt better about myself. I could feel my dysphoria lessening and my confidence strengthening. I noticed my voice change first, which was the change I was the most excited for. I noticed acne on my face, neck, and shoulders, which wasn't great, but, you know, I'll take it. They can't all be winners. I noticed hair growing in on my thighs and darkening on my calves where hair already grew. I also noticed more armpit hair growing in and more muscles developing. Then, when I went to Summer in the City, a YouTube event that takes place in London at the beginning of August, YouTube friends there informed me that my jawline had changed quite noticeably, and that my face had squared off more. This was the first time since starting testosterone that I had worn makeup. Even still, strangers that I encountered during my trip continued to read me as male. I was excited to know that I could be true to myself and my androgynous interests and expression and still be seen in a balanced way, with some strangers reading me as male and some reading me as female, until, of course, the time finally comes when unnecessary gendering is less prevalent in society. I wanted to feel balanced. I wanted the gender-neutral way I felt inside to be expressed outwardly more. As I grow into myself, I feel more comfortable with myself and who I am and the body I'm in. I can finally call this body home. Thank you for following me on this journey and supporting me through the ups and the downs as I come out of my show more and more with each passing day. I'm excited for you all to meet the real me as I grow and change and better myself as I learn to cherish myself and uplift myself, and as I navigate through this life striving to be the happiest me I can be. My name is Chandler, and I am transgender.